With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. Progress on Mayor Karen Weaver's Fast Start program for replacing lead water service lines in Flint has stalled. Jaquanda Johnson of the Flint Journal reports that the pipe replacement project is in the request for proposals phase where contractors can submit their bids to take on the job. City Hall says that they are getting lots of interest from qualified and experienced local people who will meet next month to discuss the project further. The project, according to city officials, is on an aggressive timeline, but the city is still waiting for federal lawmakers to pass a bill providing more money to replace service lines in Flint. The Fast Start program is expected to have 500 lead service lines replaced by August. The Michigan DNR has given the all-clear for having reasonable campfires this weekend. Clark Hughes on MLive.com reports that northern Michigan remains under red flag conditions, meaning that because of the dry conditions, there is a clear danger of wildfires. DNR officials urged caution when having a campfire and noted that although no state ban on fireworks has been issued, common sense is encouraged. Although, according to the National Weather Service, there may not be all that much of a chance to have a campfire, as a chance of thunderstorms exists this weekend from Flint all the way up to the Sioux. Several significant arrests were made yesterday in connection to the tax season scam of IRS impersonators. Forbes.com reports that the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration announced the arrests of multiple individuals who were allegedly responsible for over a million phone calls that defrauded almost $2 million from 1,500 people. The scam revolved around calling a victim, leaving a message saying that they owed back taxes and that the IRS was demanding immediate payment. One potential victim, after receiving the phone call, called an investigative hotline with the Senate Special Committee on Aging, which, after an investigation, tracked the flow of money to Minnesota, where multiple people were identified and eventually arrested throughout the country. In tech news, Twitter announced a plan yesterday to make their 140-character limit easier to use. The Washington Post reports that the popular messaging service will allow the inclusion of media attachments, such as images, videos, and quotes, without them weighing against the service's confining message limits. The update also addresses a popular hack that users have incorporated into their messages to infer a reply to a message, as well as an attempt to attract new people to their platform without alienating current users. And according to the company, the changes are scheduled to roll out over the coming months. In science news, researchers in the U.S. are injecting human DNA and stem cells into animal embryos to create chimeras. The International Business Times reports that researchers at the University of California in Davis are using this technique in order to grow new body parts for use in transplants. Ryan Troy and John Powers of UC Davis admitted that the research is controversial and allegedly are using so-called alternative funding to sidestep the National Institute of Health moratorium placed on chimera experiments. The NIH ban on funding of chimerical experimentation was put into effect due to the questionable ethics inherent in creating a human-animal hybrid, but reproductive biologist Pablo Ross defended the experiment, saying that scientists are not trying to create monsters, but instead are using the techniques to further biomedical science, such as his own experiments, which are attempting to grow a human pancreas in a pig. And finally, Governor Snyder declared a state of energy emergency effective immediately and lasting until June 6th. The executive order was issued yesterday due to the shutdown of a pipeline in Wisconsin and the unplanned outage of the Marathon Refinery in Detroit heading into this holiday weekend. The state of emergency temporarily suspends the hours of service rules for professional truck drivers who deliver fuel in order to ensure that there are no artificial shortages of fuel impacting visitors and residents who are heading to school, work, or vacation. Valerie Brader of the Michigan Agency for Energy says that the difficulties with the shutdown of the only pipeline between Milwaukee and Green Bay, combined with what they hope will be a short-term outage of the Marathon Refinery, are affecting prices at the pump and creating long wait times at fuel delivery truck refilling terminals. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.